I'm going to give you six secrets to real estate investing. Wow. When you hear these, you're like, man, you could figure it out. It's common sense. But until you actually figure or, you know, realize that this other, these other ways don't work, you're going to realize that this way absolutely works. Okay. First secret is we build the business first. We want to make sure that we are building the business first in the right area. We have the right people. We make sure that they're doing the right things and we're buying the right inventory for our properties. Just like having your property manager make sure that you're buying the right property, that they would manage it. They're gonna be managing it day to day for years, hopefully. You're gonna wanna make sure you're buying a good property and not in a bad area, not where they're gonna get shot. Okay, so let's talk about finding a good city that has good inventory. Remember, we talked about finding a target re rental market. So a good city that has good inventory. Uh, let's jump right into, I, I use Zillow. Actually, I've been using it for a very long time, like 2007, 2007, 8, or whenever they first started coming out. So let's look at this. These little red dots are basically homes that are for sale. And if you're going to be building a business, you're looking at it, this, this one picture was Brownsville. You look at, there's probably what, five, six in Brownsville, six red dots. It's like, there's not a lot of inventory. Now, if it takes a long time to build the business and you you can only buy two or three properties at most in that area, then it might be a lot of time taken up to you should be able to actually be in another area, another city that has a lot more inventory. Now, on top of that, when there's fewer properties to buy to rent, there's fewer property managers. You're going to have a lot harder time to find a good property manager. Now, how about this one? This city was memphis tennessee which actually has been doing really really well for my students for the last i don't know five years i have students that literally in, in starting in memphis and in three years one student in particular got 20 properties in three years scaling the business like how i told you how we're doing it now memphis you see lots of red dots there's even more if you zoom in but these red dots represent inventory if we build a business in here then we're gonna have lots of opportunities to buy properties and lots of property managers. Now you might be thinking, well, which area is the good? Is it north, south, east, west? Which, where's the good area? The biggest thing is, as soon as I find a good area to invest in that has a lot of good inventory, the right types of homes that I want to buy and make passive income on, then I stop everything else and then I find and build the business. Find the right property managers, contractors, inspectors, plumbers, roofers. I do all that so that they make sure I don't screw up. I don't live there. I don't even want to visit Memphis. It's not a plan of mine, but we invest there. Now, when you're building a business, you're looking at this area. If you ask me, well, Dustin, is the South, like getting closer to Mississippi, where the Tennessee, Mississippi line, is that a good area? Like, I really don't know. But we can find people who can. We can talk to, now, a lot of people might be thinking, well, why can't we just talk to realtors? Wouldn't they, aren't they experts? Wouldn't they just tell us the right thing? Um, no, they're they're the types of people that they work with you for, let's say, two weeks, three weeks, maybe a couple months, but then they're done with you as soon as they sell you the house. The ones that will tell you the honest truth are the ones that are going to be working with you for months and months and months. So we like building us an area, building our business in an area that has great inventory. Let me give you the cookie cutter home that we buy. Now, this is the type of home that everybody either wants to rent or they want to buy. Three bedroom, two bath. Two car garage, 1,200 to 1,400 square foot. Now, the reason why we keep it a smaller house instead of like 2,000 square feet or 2,500 square feet. When I first started investing, I thought, man, I could buy this 2,500 square foot house. It's going to be worth a lot more. But then I realized after I had to paint all the walls, I had to change out all the fixtures, I had to carpet everything. If you have a large house, then that is extra walls to paint, extra toys to change and fix, extra light sockets, extra flooring. So... We want the cookie cutter tie home. Now you can deviate from this. Like we can go up as high as like 1700. Once you get higher than that, it's just not necessary for you. But below that, we do not want to have less than a 1200 square foot because we love and we actually our tenants. The best ones are families. Their parents work in the area. So it's not easy for them to move. Their kids go to school in that area. So there's they're like literally ingrained in that community. And we have them as a great property for them. But then if you ever wanted to sell them, then this is the type of home that everybody wants to buy. So this is a cookie cutter type home that we also buy. One other quick thing, we make sure we buy it so we make $250 a month in passive income. Okay, secret number two, hire the experts in your city. 
Now, when I talk about hiring experts, you don't just call up your first property manager or a first inspector or a first contractor, say, okay, hey, you got a pulse, come and take care of my properties or come and do this. No, if I've done that and my property manager started stealing from me with six months. Now I figured out actually how to ask the right questions, how to make sure that I am actually uh, interviewing them so that I'm picking the right person. And I apologize for everybody if I talk fast. I was I did this uh, uh, call recently where somebody said I talk fast. Well, I, hopefully it comes across like I'm very passionate. I love teaching this stuff. But number two, I think, Sherrod, you're probably going to have a, re a replay of this that everybody's going to have, I hope. You're recording it right yeah, now, right, Sherrod? I feel like listening to you in 2x speed, but which is good. I like consuming <laughs> content at that speed. That's perfect awesome. for me. Yeah. I do too. I listen to it at 2x speed too. Okay. So next one is hire slow and fire fast. This is a, I learned this from running many, many businesses, sold businesses. When you hire fast, find the wrong person, potentially it's much greater probability that you're gonna fire, sorry, you're gonna hire the wrong person if you hire fast. We wanna hire slow, which means like our property manager, interview many property managers, interview them multiple times so that we absolutely find the right person that fits in our business. But then if somebody in the business, let's say a contractor or a property manager or a realtor, if they are not working out for you and they don't seem like they're doing a good job for you, fire them fast, get them out right away, then get somebody else in. There's a lot more to talk about, but I want to give you that quick uh, tip as a business owner so you can help and uh, go with the direction of hiring the right people. So when you hire the right people, property managers, let's just go through a list of them. There's so many more uh, mortgage brokers, insurance agents, property inspectors, contractors, handyman, electri electricians, plumbers, roofers, wholesalers, realtors, title companies, like all these people, companies in our business, we need to make sure we know them and we are good to work with them before we buy any properties. This is what it's like when we build the business. I had one uh, contractor who was telling me one thing saying, oh, the property's fantastic. Then I had a property manager telling me the complete opposite. No, it's not. And he would send me good pictures, the best ones that he had. She would send me bad pictures. In the end, it turned out the property, or sorry, the uh, handyman or the contractor was not doing a good job. So we have to hire the right people and then fire them very, very quickly. All right, secret number three, utilize the experts to make sure you are doing everything right. We want to utilize them that they're doing everything right. Let me give you a quick tip. And this is not in the slides. I've just, this is the th something that came to mind. When I am repairing something or I'm having a property rehabbed, I utilize many, many people to make sure that jobs getting done with the insights that they give me. Not that a lot of people doing the work, but making sure that it's, that people are checking on the work. Let's say somebody is, actually, I'll give you a particular one. I had a company come and replace a sliding glass door in one of my properties in Texas when I was, was um, having to fix it. Well, there was no tenant in there. And so I wanted, they'd send me a picture. I want to make sure it was actually good. So I called up my electrician who was literally going in there and fixing stuff up. I said, could you try the glass door? Just look at it, make sure it looks good. Make sure everything work functions properly. And he did that. It literally took him like five seconds to do everything. It looked good. Send me a couple pictures. Done. I was utilizing them to check. So I utilize experts to make sure everything is done right. Now, your property manager is the quarterback of your team. You think of football, your quarterback helps you make money, save money. They're going to make sure that you're winning. Your property manager is literally your quarterback of your team. And you want to make sure, just like I said in the beginning, you don't want to say, property manager, I just bought this property on number one Happy Street. Will you manage it? And they say, no, I'll, I'm going to get shot there. I'm not going to manage it. You do not want that. You want to instead say, I'm looking to buy this property on number one Happy Street. Will you manage the property? They say, yes, and great. You can move on with all your due diligence to make sure it's the right property. Okay, secret number four. Businesses, they're in business to make money every, every single month. So your business should be making money every single month in passive income. Let me give you an analogy of what this looks like. If you're gonna have a business that you know, without a shadow of a doubt, you can sell a candy bar for $2. Well, if you could sell a candy bar for $2 and you can buy it for a dollar, well, you'll make a dollar every single time you sell it. And you knew you could do it all day, every day. Well, you would buy as many candy bars as you could. Now, let's say, let's flip it. Let's say you could buy a candy bar for a dollar, but you could only sell it for 50 cents. You would lose 50 cents every single month or every single time you sold a candy bar. Why would you do that business? You wouldn't. You go out of business because you're losing money. 
Same thing with real estate investing. Just like if you could buy a candy bar for 50 cents and then you knew you could sell it for a dollar, well, you'd buy as many as you could. But let's say, and this is a beautiful thing about real estate investing, you guys, since you're investors, you understand this. Even if you don't have the 50 cents to buy that candy bar, let's say it took 25 cents to buy that candy bar. Now you're out of pocket, fit or 75 cents, 50 plus 25 cents, you're out of pocket, 75 cents. You still sell it for a dollar. You're gonna say, how can I borrow even more money to buy a candy bar for 75 cents total and sell it for a dollar? You're making 25 cents every single time. Very, very simple. I'm not that good at math. In fact, I'm horrible at math. Numbers in math go into my brain and they kind of flutter away. They just disappear. This is very, very, this is why I like real estate. It's so simple. Income minus your expenses is your profit. You have a property manager, the expert on the ground. Don't ask your realtor, your realtor, in fact, countless times, realtors have told me and my students that the rents are gonna be at least 20% more than they actually were because they want them, because they know we're investors, they want us to buy the property. Then when we ask the property manager, how much can we rent this for? They give us the actual. In fact, when you have an expert, this property manager would be an expert would say, hey, property manager, I'm looking to buy this property. How much can I rent it for? If they're really good, they're gonna probably have properties in the area. So you know what, I know that area. In fact, we had a property right around the corner there. We were trying to get $1,600 for it a month. Zillow said 1,600, Realtor said 1,600. We couldn't. So we had to lower the price to 1,500 or 1,400. That is expert information that you must have in your business. Okay, next secret is creative financing or utilizing other people's money. When you have a business, you have business financing that you can use on top of your own financing that you can have, as well as many, many other ways to get financing. But this is how we scale our business. A lot of people think, oh my goodness, we only have four loans that we can get on our person. You know, the banks say you can only have four loans when you buy houses. Well, that's not true. That's just their criteria. You can actually, banks can actually go up to 10 and some banks can even do other great ways. And we utilize all these. Let me quickly go through a list of ones that I have done. Now, I literally have done, I think, 15 different ways to get financing for all of my properties. And I coach this to all my students, but I even have a YouTube video where I literally go through all the 15 ways and how I actually did it. Now, very simply, all cash, you can easily do that. Now, I love delayed financing. This is a strategy. Let's say you had a home equity line of credit, which is the second one. Well, actually, I could give you a real world example. There was a pastor up in Sacramento. I started coaching him and he didn't have any money. Pastors don't make much money but he did have a property. With that property, he had equity in the property. So what we did was, because he wanted to invest in real estate, we got a home equity line of credit. Then he took that home equity line of credit, cashed out to buy a property in, I think it was Atlanta, Georgia, bought this property, is originally 170, we got him down to 110. Remember, we're investors, so we buy it for lower than it's worth. And then he bought it, fixed it up, made it worth more, and then now he has it rented. Now remember, he still has his home equity line of credit, he has to pay off. Well, we then refinanced it with delayed financing, which means, let's say, as soon as the property's rehabbed, they would refinance it then. You don't have to wait six months, which is another strategy. Refinanced it, pulled all that cash back out. Now this property, which was free and clear, now has a 30-year fixed loan on it. We took that money, paid off his home equity line of credit, and he literally has no money in this deal of his own pocket. It was just out of his equity. Now he has that equity to do it all over again. Okay, other ones, seller financing, hard money subject to like the existing mortgage. You know, you buy it subject to the existing mortgage, which we can go into later. Private money, commercial loans. I've literally bundled properties together in portfolio loan. As soon as you create a business, you get an EIN number from the IRS, and then you start building business credit, which then you buy properties with your business. Blanket loans, signature loans, you go to a bank, say, bank, I want to get an unsecured line of credit. Okay, great. Sign your name here, just like a credit card, but you could spend that money however you want. Higher fees, but if you're doing this business right, you're making 25 cents every single time you borrow that money, you're going to do all the t all day. I even, as a bad strategy, I used a credit card to cash out, refinance, not refinance, but to do the cash out, um, uh, whatever they call it, where I took the money out and then I bought properties with that because of such a low interest rate. And I knew I accounted for my expenses before I buy the property. There's so many more. I'm just touching the, scratching the surface. But at the same time, all of these can be combined. We get creative. We multiply three or four together or add them all together. So we, let's say we didn't have the money for down payment. Well, we find hard money. Well, from there, maybe we get some commercial loans with it. And we also use a signature loan. There's so many ways to do this, but as long as you're doing it right, where you're making money because it's a business, 
As long as you're doing it right, you're going to be able to make money. Secret number six, automate your business with systems, procedures, and processes. This is something I absolutely love in my businesses because with these, I make sure that my property managers, my contractors, everybody else does everything the right way that I want them to do. What I also do is I tell my property managers, hey, property manager, I know you have lots of other landlords with you that are working with you. However you work with them and run their business, that's totally fine. But how you run my business, this is how I want you to run my business with these systems, procedures, and processes. Let me give you a quick way to understand a quick systems, procedure, and process. Rent is due on the first, late after the third. On the fourth, you give a three-day notice, and every state has different laws, so just got make sure you're following those laws. Then you give a late fee. You give that late fee and then start the eviction right after the three day notice is completed because you're now running it like a business. And this is the most non-discriminatory practice ever. If you're thinking, well, I don't want to discriminate on people, you're treating every single person the exact same. It doesn't matter because it's a business. I got, I learned this the hard way. In fact, my first few properties, I was such a pushover landlord. I would hear stor sob stories. Like one lady literally said, well, my son got, went to jail a second time this month. I had to bail him out. We don't have enough money. I'm like, well, okay, I guess I'll go ahead and let you slide. The sad thing was, it was like the fourth time he got arrested. It's like, well, I have to feed my family. I have a mortgage to pay. If I call up my bank and say, hey, bank, my son got arrested. Can I not pay the mortgage? I'll say, no, you have to pay the mortgage. Same thing, we are running a business. This is how I feed my family. This is how I make sure that I have money every single month to put a roof over heads and feed my family.